Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. How's, uh, hello, anyone there? Good morning. Hey, good morning, Victoria. Hello, Professor, hello, good morning. Good morning, um, Jordan. Professor, I actually had a question Professor. for you real quick. Yeah, glad to hear our voices. Uh, yeah, Kenny, you have a question? No, no, Jordan, yeah. Jordan. Jordan, yeah, you have a question. Um, yeah. Is it possible if you can stay after class for like two minutes, we can have a private conversation? I have to yeah, ask yeah, because yeah. I'm sure, trying, you sure, know. Sure, sure. Good morning, yeah. All right, Good morning. Good morning Jason. Jason. Good morning, Jason. All righty. Um, uh, okay, so um, uh, where was I? Oh, so in our last class, right, um, the file has been closed already. I should bring it up. Uh, <clears throat> so, in our last class, I demonstrated how the uh, the formula for growth uh, return or gro rate of return or growth rate, uh, how that process is derived. So, date modify. What happened? Time value, where is time value? Yeah, there you go. And <clears throat> so now it's time to actually um, do the Excel uh, example, Excel exercise of that problem, right? Okay, so um, ah, okay. I want you to uh, I want you to open this file. I want you to have this file in front of you. We you know we did this exercise last time, so today. Um, we're going to be doing, we're going to be finding these, uh, working on the rates and the uh, uh, solution for N. Let me open. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Let me try this one. So, um, the growth rate, uh, let's see. Okay, growth rate. I mean, it's Oh. oh, this is giving me such a hard time. <clears throat> so I'm not going to uh, go over this again, right? Because I already, uh, uh, I explained 
in our last class, I explained the uh, steps of derivation, how this formula is derived, right? We did that in the last class. I'm not going to dwell on that anymore. Uh, Oh. Okay, future value, right, over uh, present value or principal raised to 1 over n minus 1. And <clears throat> this is also R, right? And uh, remember, rate and growth rate are basically the... Uh, 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 same thing, right? They are not, uh, but only, you know, uh, they are different only uh, because of the different context. And remember that. Uh, remember the uh, house value example, right? Uh, the first example we did in ROI. Um, there are two scenarios, right, in house value, scenario one and scenario two. And under scenario one, growth rate is equal to uh, return. But under scenario two, uh, they are not the same, right? And actually the um, uh, return, uh, which is also called yield, uh, growth rate is part of return, actually. Uh, so it's going to be more like this, you know. Return is greater than the growth rate, right? <clears throat> Uh, I'm not going to go over this again uh, because it's going to be just a uh, uh, duplication of everything and uh, then we'll be, you know, uh, uh, we, won't, we will never be able to uh, reach, you know, uh, uh, our uh, milestone, right? So um, let's go to our example. So in um, uh, go to row 18, and I want you to clean out, delete all the highlighted cells as before. Do you have? Do you all have this file in front of you? Hmm? Not this moment. Professor. Yeah, I, I already told you to have this file, you know, already like, you know, uh, five minutes ago. Please have it, uh, open it in front of you. Um, and I see seven people in the Collaborate, and then let's see, today's forum. Uh, I see 10 people, at least 10 people. So <laughs> we are still missing three people here. Um, you know, what can I do? Um, so if you have this file in front of you, I, it's very important. Uh, let me just verify. Let me, let me confirm. Uh, Alisa, do you have this file in front of you? Alisa? Yes, I have it in front of me. Okay, great, great. Jared, do you have this file in front of you, Jared? Jared? You had your uh, microphone yes. on? Okay, good. Sorry. Jessica, uh, Jessica, uh, Jordan, do you have this file in front of you? Jordan, are you there, Jordan? Kenny, do you have this file in front of you, Kenny? Are you there, Kenny? Yes, Professor. Yes. Okay, great, 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 good. Nolvia, do you have this file in front of you? Yes. Okay, great, great. So at least, you know, uh, uh, almost everyone in, in the collaborate session uh, are following my instructions. That's a good thing. All righty. So um, 
let's figure out, you know, uh, let's first, you know, uh, take a look at row uh, example in row 18. Principal is 10K, right? Future value is 30K, um, time five years. So here, what is, uh, what is the question here? Uh, you want to grow this $10,000 principal to 30K in five years. Then what should be the uh, APR? What should be the APR? What should be the annual percentage rate? And M is uh, compounding frequency is one. So annual compounding. So in this case, we don't, you know, we don't have to worry too much, you know, um, uh, about making adjustment. So we'll just go with a simple, um, uh, simple thing. I mean, a simple form. Uh, then all you need to do is just build in that, you know, formula, right? Uh, which will be F over P, okay, and raise to one over N. Uh, I want to click in, I want to click that, uh, I want to click in, uh, click it in, but you know there's no way I can do that because uh, the the formula is uh, hanging over like you know um, both cell B18 and C18. So you can't click in C18. So what you need to do is just type in C18, okay, and then minus one. That should be enough. Then one more thing. Um, when you raise it to one over n, uh, this has to be in the parenthesis. Although uh, we don't need to put, uh, you know, uh, we don't need to put parenthesis here, but that's that's for human eyes, right? I mean, for any human, uh, it's obvious. It is obvious that you know uh, it's raised to one over n. Right, it's raised to uh, the exponent is you know one over n, but to um, when you write it this way, this this just goes you know linear, right? When it is linear, if you don't in uh, enclose one over c eighteen in the parenthesis, then what's going to happen? Uh, if you don't have the parenthesis, then uh, first, the whole thing will be raised to 1, and that will be divided by C18. So it's going to be a whole different thing. So you always keep in mind, uh, PAMDAS is very important. PAMDAS, right? Parenthesis, exponent, you know, multiplication, division, you know. Now, so if you do that, there you go. All right. And as soon as I got that result here, right, I got the result, you know, uh, uh, copied here, right? But then the next uh, row 19 is a different, it's a different question because it's asking for how many years. It means, you know, in row 19, you uh, principal is known, uh, interest rate is known, right? Future value is known, and in that case, what's going to be the uh, how, how many years? Uh, what's going to be the time it takes, right? To grow 10k into uh, 30k, and uh, we uh, because it's the same example, it should be five. But later, uh, uh, this is asking for uh, uh, this problem is asking you to solve this problem for uh, n, right? So that we will do later. We'll talk about it later. Uh, but then uh, let's take a look at row 20. It's the same thing as row 18, but the only difference is that it is, you know, uh, uh, quarterly. Compounding frequency is quarterly. Then what do you think should happen? First, uh, it is APR, so uh, eventually it should be the same thing. And 24.57. Um, but then that should be the result, a final result 
uh, but finding n, uh, uh, okay, let's do it here. Um, okay. Um, Would we be finding the number of payments? Uh, never mind, never mind. Uh, we're, we're finding R, okay? This is the problem about finding R. So uh, this R is the periodic rate. In, in other words, when compounding is quarterly, right? Um, the actual... Uh, the actual rate that, you know, for example, if it is 24%, think about it, if it is, uh, I mean, 25%, this is almost 25%. If it is, APR is 25%, quarterly, it, it should be like 5%, uh, quarterly, it should be, uh, it would be easier to use 24. If APR is 24%, actual quarterly rate will have to be uh, 6%. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Quarterly rate should be six percent. Yeah, it should. Um, yeah, so uh, we must find the quarterly rate first, right, and then arrive at the uh, uh, APR. Uh, and uh, depending on uh, the APR, will be different. You know, uh, uh, it's not going to be twenty four point five seven anymore because uh, remember when. Uh, compounding frequency is higher, the future value is higher, right? The higher the compounding frequency, the greater the future value. So um, think about it. Um, under the same scenario of the same future value, in this scenario, you still have 10K. Your principal is still 10K. Then your target future value is 30K. Then... Uh, whatever the uh, uh, period, periodic rate is, then the APR will be uh, periodic rate times four. And this, should, this APR should be smaller than this because uh, if it is the same APR and it is co uh, compounded quarterly, it should end up in a greater future value. But if it is the same future value, same target future value, then the rate should be smaller. With a smaller APR, you should be able to reach the same future value, right? That's the logic. So first, let's find R. To, to find the periodic rate, you should, you know, first find what is the actual uh, compounding, uh, actual number of compounding. And we know it is 20, right? It is 20. Ugh. C25 times D25. Right? 20, right? And then, okay, and all you need to do is same thing. F over P. These two. Over N, which is, you know, in F20, right? So I'll have to type that in because it's one. Ah, what happened? F20. That should be F20. G25 over A25. Raise, oh, F25, I'm sorry. What did I do? F25. There you go. It's going to be 5.65. So then APR should be uh, the periodic quarterly rate, in other words, periodic rate times four, right? Quarterly rate times four, then should be the APR. There you go. So uh, it comes to 22.59. And as I said, yeah, with the same uh, principal and same future value, same five years, but higher compounding frequency, uh, it takes less APR 
right? It takes less APR to arrive at the same result, right? If, if APR is still 24.57 and it is quarterly compounded quarterly, then you should end up with a greater future value, right? So the point is, um, um, the higher the compounding frequency, the greater the future value, right? So you would prefer higher compounding, right? Higher compounding frequency. And um, uh, and mathematically, if you know other conditions, other inputs are the same, other inputs are the same, um, but you know um, compounding frequency is higher then APR should be lower, okay? So then how do we uh, make that adjustment here? Well, uh, all you need to do is, first of all, uh, it's the same thing. Uh, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to raise that to one over N, which is, you know, uh, uh, in this case, it's gonna be, uh, C20 times B20, okay, minus one, okay. You see, we'll just need to uh, make adjustment to N, and because N should be 20, uh, which is, you know, the result of five times four, right, uh, quarterly compounding, and, um, don't forget to put parentheses here too, because otherwise it's going to be a, uh, what Excel will do is dividing one by C21 first and then multiply that by D20. So it's going to be a totally different thing. So if you do this, you will see um, 75.65, which is exactly this, but this is wrong, right? Why? In this problem, in this problem, some people say, oh, oh you know, I got the answer. No, this in this problem, what's, it's not asking for R, isn't it right? It's not asking for the periodic rate, but it's asking for the APR. And you should answer in APR. So then how do you find APR? Well, the whole, then this whole thing will simply need to be multiplied by four. No, right? Oh, this whole thing will be multiplied by D20, right? There you go. Okay. So if you do it, uh, if, uh, if you're solving for R and the compounding frequency is not one, then it's better to do it this way, right? I mean, this one gets quite complex. And I've been telling you, uh, complex model is not necessarily a better thing because uh, uh, it's always, you know, uh, it, it gets more it gets more difficult to identify the source of the error. If there is any error, it's going to be more difficult to uh, detect the source of the error, right? And it's going to be more difficult to uh, fix the error. But if you do it this way, um, uh, this model is simpler, right? Simpler, and everything is, you know, uh, 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 the parts that need to be adjusted uh, is adjusted separately outside the formula, right? So uh, you can easily, you know, uh, in other words, they are broken down into a smaller parts, so. It's easier to, uh, if there is any error, it's easier to uh, find the error. It's easier to discover the error and therefore easier to fix the, uh, uh, the problem, fix the source of error, right? Makes sense. Everyone got the same result? Did everyone get the same result? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Uh, uh, just one person got the same result. I think that was Kenny. Alisa, did you get the same result? Alisa? 
Yes, I got the same result. Okay, great. Jared, did you get the same result? Jared? Yes. Yes, I got the same okay. result. All right, great, uh, yes, Jason. Professor. Yes, okay, yes, great. Professor. All righty. Um, Natasha, did you get the same result? Natasha? Jordan, did you get the same result? Yeah, I did. <laughs> great, great. Novia, did you get the same result, Novia? Yes. Okay, great, great, great. So now, um, that uh, finally, that leaves us. Um, okay, I just want to add one more thing. Um, yeah, sometimes, you know, uh, 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 I said this before, you know, you can do this by, you know, Excel's built-in function, of course, but then ex uh, you still need to make an adjustment. If you go to Excel's built-in function, then uh, uh, you'll need to go to the financial category and scroll down until you find rate. But then end periods, you cannot just enter five there, right? Because yeah, uh, five is for number 18, I mean row 18, but for number 20, right, you should make an adjustment. So you should do, you know, uh, like G20 times G20, okay? And present value, you have to enter this as negative. Future value there. And then what it's going to give you will be only the uh, periodic rate. It's going to give you only the periodic rate, right? You see, uh, and it's, uh, it's even rounded, too much rounded. So by default, you must always give it minimum two to three decimal places, two to three decimal places, okay? And then, uh, okay, you got this. But then this is wrong, you know, because the problem is asking for annual rate, not the periodic rate. So then you will still need to uh, make adjustment. The whole thing must be uh, adjusted by times this, okay? So in other words, you still need to, uh, uh, to make adjustment, you, you still need to think, right? You should be a thinker, not a, a you know, a data puncher, right? But a lot of students fail to become a thinker, but just stop at, you know, being the data puncher. That's all they are. They, that's all they become. They just stop at being, uh, they stop there. They, they become data puncher and they stop there. They don't think. And then they end up with, you know, something like uh, this. And they think, you know, what's wrong? I, what did I do wrong? You, you are wrong because you didn't think, right? And as long as it takes thinking, as long as it takes thinking, right, the logical reasoning, right, it's better to um, fully use the formula right, which will make you think about the mechanism, right? And only when you commend the mechanism, when you can commend the, when you have the full understanding of the mechanism, right, then um, only then you can get it right, right? So that's what this class is about. Right Be to become becoming an analytical thinker and to become a logical reasoner, not a data puncher. Accounting classes make you a data puncher. They turn you into a data puncher. They tell you, oh, use you know Excel has this you know uh, function. Use that. Well, you can use that, but then you you end up with you know. Uh, uh, you just punch in the data and end up with the wrong answer because you didn't think. Okay? Now, next. So we have only one variable left. 
right? We have only one variable left. In other words, I've been telling you all along that um, we have, you know, uh, since we have four variables, you know, future, future value principle uh, R and N, right? We got this, we got this, we got this. Then how about N? How do we solve for that? Okay, how do we solve for that? So um, let's think about so again, we have to start from the uh, uh, very uh, we have to start from the very basic. I wanted to start from the very basic. Uh, the initial equation, right? The original equation, which is, you know, uh, this. I, I, P times one plus R raised to N. Now this time uh, it's giving you a headache because uh, this is known. Everything, uh, this is known, principle is known, R is known. The only unknown is N. In other words, how many years, how many years will it take? In other words, something like, you know, your target future value is 30K. And currently you have 10K. And currently the market interest rate is 10%. And how many years will it take? Right? That will be the uh, uh, only question left. Right? Hmm. Then, um, now how do we, uh, we need to isolate N. That means we will need to isolate N, right? But how do we do that? Uh, of course, we need to identify, um, we know this is, you know, uh, basically Z equals X times structure. So we'll need to isolate as far as we can. Although we cannot immediately, we cannot directly isolate n, but you know we'll have to do you know whatever we can. So whatever whatever we can is you know first you know um, uh, isolate um, uh, we'll have to isolate this term right. So. Now we have one plus R raised to N. Now then how do we, the problem is then still N is not isolated. So how do we isolate N? Now to isolate N, we need to use, the only way we can do it is by using log or logarithm, right? So what is a log? Um, and so let's go back to our uh, slide. And the logarithm is a, a way of expressing a large number by the exponent of the base. Okay, for example, there are. Ah, there are generally three types of logarithm, 
three types of log logarithms, you know, uh, common log and binary log and natural log. Common log is basically a log using 10 as the base. And that's not a difficult thing. We can, uh, we all know already, you know, it's not a, uh, Common log is, you know, um, for example, we all know, I, I am so <laughs> annoyed by uh, we know 100 is 10 squared, right? Is there Ah, that's 10 squared, right? And 1,000, comma. Ten cubed, 10,000 is 10 to the fourth. 10 to the fourth power, and so on, right? Uh, One million is 10 to the sixth. Don't forget the comma, it's very important. to the sixth and then one billion look at the uh, zeros look at the number of zeros ten yeah ten to the ninth of course right then the trillion trillion is ten to the twelfth right Look at all these, you know, uh, commas. Yes. Every three digits. So you don't have to, just by counting the commas, you can tell whether it's trillion or whether it is, you know, um, um, I, I used to know what's the uh, after <laughs> trillion, but I forgot. Um, quint quintillion. After trillion, it is called... Um, quadrillion or uh, and then quadrillion will be uh, 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 no no quintillion I guess quint because you know trillion has you know uh, 12 zeros quintillion has 15 zeros right and after quintillion uh, uh, you know I, I never even counted even <laughs> So the point is, it's easy to understand. It's easy to understand, you know, common law, right? Uh, why? Because log is uh, nothing but expressing. Uh, in other words, so, uh, okay, let me do it this way. So log of 100 <sighs> base 10 is called you know with base 10 uh, it's usually you know it's pronounced uh, it, it's red Base 10 log of 100, base 10 log of 100, or uh, log of 100 with base 10, right? Uh, to base 10, log of 100 to base 10. Or, uh, but you know, uh, either way, you know, it's fine. But you know, uh, 10, base 10 log of 100, it's easier to read, um, is 2. Why? We know uh, it's uh, uh, 
Base 10. Base 10 log of 10 squared, right? Base 10 log of 10 squared. Now, the thing is, uh, when uh, law, when you have, you know, um, the base of the log and uh, the base of the number must be the same thing. And if it is the same, you can rewrite it like this, 2 times 2 base 10 log of 10. OK, 2 base log of 10. What is base 10 log of 10? What is base 10 log of 10? It is 1. This thing is 1, right? Isn't that right? What does that mean? Base 10 log of 10 means basically, you know, uh, uh, 10, that means 10 raised to 1, which is just 10 itself. Is that right? Base 10 log of 10 is 10 yeah. raised to 1, which is just 10 itself. So it is 1, you know, this exponent. Base 10 log of 10 means you know, the exponent of 1, right? So then this will eventually become, it has to become 2, right? In other words, um, you are expressing, simply expressing you're simply expressing a large number by its own exponent. So if we continue to do it like that, right? Think about it. Ten, uh, base 10 log of 10,000, which is, you know, uh, uh, base 10 log of 10 to the fourth, will have to be 4 because it's just simply expressing it by its, you know, exponent. And then by the same uh, analogy, by the same uh, process, right? One million, which is an over... base 10 log of 10 to the sixth, will simply turn it, will become 6, right? Base 10 log of 1 billion will be base 10 log of 10 to the ninth, which will be 9. But then, uh, think about it. If we express the large number by its exponent to the base, right, mm. then what kind of benefit is there? Of course, uh, in this case, Base 10 log will be very useful only for the numbers that are like multiples of 10, right? Or rather, the products of 10 rather than multiple, right? Products of 10. Um, but what kind of benefit can we derive from this? Now, think about it. If we have a, um, uh, you, uh, you will hear, you know, um, uh, later, you know, actually, when you get the financial market data, stock data, um, in, in terms of, you know, growth, um, you will see uh, the change in return, right? If you're looking at the uh, uh, trend of the change in return, you will see the graph in log scale or uh, normal scale, what's the difference? Uh, so think of it this way, log scale will be um, expressing everything in terms of, you know, exponent. So suppose we are, uh, we want to express, we want to show the distance between the Earth and the nearest galaxy, right? Uh, we are here, this Earth, 
let's say, you know, this is the sun. This is the sun. And Earth is here. Eh. This is the Earth. And this is the distance between uh, the Earth and the uh, Sun. Okay, and our nearest galaxy is here, which is, you know, uh, uh, Andromeda galaxy, I think. The nearest galaxy is Andromeda galaxy. And let's say the distance between the Andromeda, uh, between Earth and the uh, Andromeda galaxy is the, uh, uh, let's say, using the uh, distance between Sun and the Earth, Uh, let's say, you know, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen. Um, and looking at this, you might think, oh, the the distance between the Earth and the uh, Andro, uh, the, our nearest galaxy is only 13 times the uh, distance between Sun and Earth. No. If it is normal scale, it is, you know, um, 13 times. But if this is um, uh, logarithmic scale, this is logarithmic scale on a logarithmic scale, log scale. If it is 13, that means, you know, uh, the distance between the, uh, and if the distance between the uh, Earth and Sun is 10, right? <laughs> Not 10 miles, but let's say just 10. Uh, then that's 10 to the 13th. The distance is 10 to the 13th, which is what? One, uh, 10 trillion, right? 10 trillion. You understand? In other words, um, how would you express the distance of 10 trillion times between the distance between the sun and earth and the sun? How would you express it? How would you cap capture it on a limited space? I mean, um, if this, this 10, let's say this 10 means, this 10 means not, um, ten to the ninth miles. So if the distance between the sun and the uh, earth, if it is you know, 10 to the uh, ninth or uh, 10 trillion miles, 10 trillion miles, right? On a normal scale, it will be simply 10 trillion times 13. But that's, that's normal scale. If it is logarithmic scale, It will be a huge distance, and there's no way you can easily capture it on a limited space. But on a logarithmic scale, it will be like this. Okay? But, but then that's how logarithmic scale can help us to uh, condense, right? A huge distance or huge number right, of, you know, a huge magnitude, the difference of huge magnitude, right? So that's what the uh, log is for, but then how is it going to help us? I mean, we are out of time, so how is it going to help us to solve our, uh, answer our question about N? We're going to talk about that in the next class, okay, since we're out of time. All righty, so that's it for today. Any questions so far? Any questions? Any questions? No? Professor. Yeah. The the test grade when go to show up. What doesn't show up? No. What See, didn't show up? The professor is not allowed to see this uh, score. I, I didn't hear you. I, I didn't I can't quite I 
You cannot see what? One second. The test results. Oh, the test results. Yes. No, no. Uh, it's on. It's on the uh, connect, and you should be able to see that. No. Then the beginning no? say the professor is not allowed. Okay. Okay. I will. Okay. I will. Uh, don't worry. I'll take care of that. Okay. Any other questions? No. No. All righty. So if there is no other questions. Wait, uh, Professor, I, I still would like to speak to you for two minutes. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, I'll wait for you uh, after everyone has left, okay? Uh, okay. All righty, I, um, I will see you guys on Wednesday. Have a great afternoon, and uh, see you later, okay? Take care, everyone. I'm going to stop. Yeah, I'm going to stop sharing and stop recording. But I won't sign out. <laughs> uh, I will wait for... Uh, was it uh, Jordan? Yeah. Okay. Just stop. Yeah.